Hey everyone, I'm back to share another page, or actually pages, in my Diana Markham recipe book that I've built. Um, so I got a, some crafty time in um, this past weekend to um, do some coloring. Um, so I'm not going to share the colors of the Copics that I used here because I have them at the end of the video, which I pre-recorded. Um, but this is the finished project um, for those colored images that I did. So let me show you what I used. You could see the image here or one of the images. Um, I shared the other one on Instagram uh, after I'd colored it. So this is this page is made with this um, made with love um, cardstock. It's a 12 by 12 and um, that's the collection it's from. I, it's called 7121 Flower and Sugar. It's got flowers on one side and then on the other it's got a whole bunch of baking and stuff baking themed items this is a coordinating yellow cardstock to um that sold with um by doodle bug um so i have some solid a solid pack um so this is some yellow um cardstock and then this one is the petite prince bumblebee swiss dot and so if you buy a petite prince package um that has this colorway that's what this one is called because I have several of these and it has a opposite white with the yellow dots um, on the other side. So those are the papers I used. These are the dies. Um, actually, there's a there's two die sets here. I use this one from Paper Tray Ink. Um, it's a grow grain ribbon with a bow. And this is the Spellbinders die that I use to cut out. It's a Grand Nestabilities die. I don't even know if these are still available, but these, this is in a larger set, so you need to have a die cutter that can actually handle the larger set. Um, I think this is the second, second largest in the set that I have. Okay, so those are the dies, um, and then I, I, as I said, I use my Copics to color up the image, and here's the image. I actually created that acetate sheet to cover it. I actually have two of them in the book, but um, this is to cover the full book on this side and then I have another one that will do this left hand side so if the book is left open or if I um, bring it around to the back it's protected from any um, you know things in the kitchen like food items or liquids so um, let me get rid of that glare um, so this is the the image that I did color up um, I did create the page for the book just like I have done for the other pages I've punched it and it is double doubled up on the binding side and then I have a pocket on the back side because I'm going to show you another image so I I actually cut um this yellow polka dot piece of paper um so that the sides are the same size as the image but the top and the bottom kind of um come out and I used my um a tool that I've had in my stash for a long time it's actually it does borders it's one of those um this is an American Crafts um, cutting board, but you could see these little um, colored things here. They have different edge borders, and this is probably more for scrapbooking. I just happen to have this because I was interested in the tool some time ago. I still have it in my stash because I don't scrapbook. And you can see this one here does a large scallop. I think that's the one that I used. Um, this one has a smaller, like a pinking edge sort of wavy line, and it's smaller. Um, this again has a, a different type of scallop. So that's what I use. It will cut down 12 by 12 paper or smaller. Um, actually has a extension arm on it. So I, I just wanted you to know, it also does scoring because this is a scoring wheel right here, I believe. This is from American Crafts. I don't know if you can still find it. And it's really easy to change out the blades. You just lift the cartridge up. Your, your hand never comes in contact with the blade because the blade is inside this plastic container. And when you go to cut, you actually push down. See, you push down on this and the blade comes out. So that's the reason why you, it's not a you know problem changing the blades out. Okay, so this is the page that I created. Um, I did put some um, marker around the edge of the image just to kind of, give it a frame and that is created from the die itself when you do the um, die cutting there is a little embossed line here and I just stopped at the line 
So I didn't show you the Copic colors, but if you stay to the end of the video, you'll see the colors come up um, because I share them in a separate video. Uh, and this image is uh, a digital image that was that is available in Diana Markham's Etsy shop. Okay, so if you're interested in that, I did not. Um, I only glued the bow down in the middle, so you can make this dimensional, but um, it's flat because it's been in the book, and the book has been closed. So um, I've been trying to keep my pages um, kind of flat because, again, I don't want to take up all these the ring um, space here because I'm going to be adding more recipes into the book. All right, so with this book or page, I did another coloring and I put it in the pocket of the back of this, okay? And this is a smaller image. Um, it, it is this um, peppermint pie stamp from Diana Markham sometime back. This is from 1999. So I used this one and there is a heart peppermint that she also did sometime back. It's called Peppermint Heart A4216. I don't know what year it is. Oh, wait, 1998. So this one came before the other one did. So this one I put on, or I used one of the um, recipe cards that Doodleblog has. Um, so I just fussy cut it out after I colored it. And again, if you want to see the um, Copic markers that I used, stay to the end of the video. It'll show them. Um, I fussy cut this out as well as the, all the hearts um, and then glued it down to the recipe card. Now it's also backed up with some doodle bug paper. This is a six by six from one of the Christmas lines. It's got, you know, peppermint stripes. So I thought I would use that um, as a way to kind of make the recipe card um, thicker. Okay. So that is the front with the colored image. And then on the back, I added a place for you to uh, do the notes. So if you want to change up this recipe, any, and you work it out, then you can do that. That's using these um, recipe cards from Paper Tray Ink. This is the back side of the recipe card that you're seeing. The front side says uh, recipe and prep time on the side. So I've shown those before. And then I put more of the fussy cut hearts. Now I just created this so that it's a tab you can use to pull out from the pocket, right? Because you can just slip it right down in here. So that is another um, colored image that I um, did this weekend and have added to my dessert section. Peppermint pie isn't, uh, if you read it, read the recipe, it's making the pie with ice cream. So this is probably more of a warm weather treat as opposed to say, well, in the U.S., a Christmas time treat because most people don't have warmer weather here in the United States unless you live in a tropical area. But uh, at Christmas time here, it's too, it's too cold for ice cream. Um, well, Sometimes it's warm, but <laughs> those are just odd years. But anyway, those are the stamps that I um, colored up. Well, I'll leave that out. Um, you can see the two things that I did this weekend. And I hope you enjoyed my share. And I'll be back with more later. Bye for now. Hi, everyone. I'm back with some project shares. Um, yeah, this video is going to be project shares. But first, I want to um, share the... Copic colors that I use to color my images because I want to put them away and then I'll come back and actually show the finished projects. So um, I had some stamped images that I have been stamping or printing out if they're digitals um, and wanted to color up for my um, Diana Markham recipe book. So I'm going to show you the um, images I've colored and the Copic colors I use to color them so that I can put the markers away and actually um, start uh, crafting and putting them, putting them on pages. So the first one is this um, peppermint pie um, image and I actually have two stamps that I've used for it. Um, peppermint pie uses um, two sets of Copics. Uh, two sets of colorways. Actually it's three because there's grays in it too. So these are the colors that I used um, for my peppermint pie image. Um, and the sorry, the image looks like this. And I've colored up a bunch of these little hearts as well. 
um, so I can use them for my finished project. So you can see here I used a kind of a minty blue and a red together for the peppermint pie recipe. And I've fussy cut it out um, as well as the hearts. So yeah, I cut those by hand. I didn't use my scanning cut this time. Um, sometimes I like to sit here and just do that, I guess. Okay, so that's the peppermint pie recipe stamp. I colored the um, carrot cake muffins. I, di I cu die cut it first um, using this die from Spellbinders. It's a large rectangle set. I I'll bring it out later. Um, but this is a digital stamp that Diana Markham put in her Etsy shop. I think this came out in April, maybe. Um, and I never colored it, so um, I went ahead and enlarged it, I think, um, to a little bit of a larger size for my recipe book. And um, these are the colors I used for that image. So there's a bunch of different colors, um, simply because it's got a lot of different things in it. So let me just gather them together, get myself ready to show them. I think these, these are it. So if you want to pause, you can do that. These are all the colors I use to color the image that I'm sharing with you. Okay. I, I decided to do yellow carrots. <laughs> so um, yellow carrots, it, it uh, there are yellow carrots out there. Um, so yeah, that's what I use to color the carrot cake muffin recipe stamp. Oh, and I used a glaze pen which is somewhere around here. A black glaze pen. I like to use this for the eyes. And so it makes the um, eyes pop a little bit more. I, I hope you can see that in the image itself um, because it makes the eyes kind of shiny. Okay, so that is the carrot cake muffins recipe. And then the last one I colored up um, is this one right here and it's the apple salad. Um, this one has um, a little bit of a uh, yellow um, tinge in it, so let me gather those up. Um, got some yellow, green, and some browns. So here are the markers I used for the apple. Um, so there are some apples that aren't... Um, all red like they have like a Fuji apple for instance or um, Honeycrisp. Honeycrisp are not as red as this but um, there are some apples that have like a yellow um, kind of blend in them so I tried to do that here um, where I colored a section here that was yellow and then um, proceeded with the red. So these are the colors I used for that um, and now I can put my markers away and get on with making some projects. Um, this one I'm gonna die cut I'm not going to um, fussy cut it out. I'm actually going to die cut it um, and put it on a page. And then I've already um, done the others or kind of planned those out. So I will be back to share the actual projects.